in the current labor sector, how do employers exhibit or show or demonstrate loyalty to employees? I think that whenever we're talking about the labor sector, all employers pretty much, you know, communicated very early on, which for the most part, I agree with for the most part, I'm on with their, you know, uh, you know, with what I'm going to describe further that they would require different job candidates, <clears throat> namely that an employee exhibits loyalty to a company, the employer. But I really feel like as with anything in life, everything's a two way street. Maybe, you know, when you're interacting with someone in general in life, you know, they may not, you know, do everything or exhibit the type of enthusiasm for somewhat, you know, an individual's potential or, you know, or skills at an earlier point in which they're just interacting with the person. And I feel like, you know, that could, you know, maybe put some asymmetry in the in the relationship or the interaction between these two individuals because then one person is maybe trying to get more of the attention of say, you know, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, a company that they're applying to or some type of, you know, opportunity within an academic setting because it's kind of both the same kind of communication skills that someone is using whenever they're looking to, you know, apply for either, you know, a lab or something that they're trying to look at doing in academia, like what I've done in versus in industry, which is another occupation in another space that I've also had a little bit of experience in, albeit obviously not a lot. But um, when we're when we're talking about whether, you know, way, whether there are a lot of tangible ways or easy ways in which we can enumerate and just list off and discuss for, you know, our own curiosity, how an employer exhibits loyalty for an employee, that list is pretty short, to be honest. It's pretty short because it's just like, <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain why it's short because you just have to go look at the news about the layoffs and the freaking mass layoffs, like to have an idea about the type of perspective that I'm just trying to offer and what's actually going on economically speaking and what the likely economic reality is for our country moving in the future. And it's like, with houses being so difficult to, you know, get, you know, rent being very high, even if that's another housing alternative that some individual wants to exercise, you know, with his or her income that they need to use for living expenses and, you know, housing expenses and related expenses just to be able to keep on going every day and continue to try to continue working hard. That possibility is even very difficult to obtain because I know that a lot of people have interesting discussions online when there are studies which report figures that purportedly, you know, even if you make like around a hundred thousand or even more, they'll, you know, 50, more than 50% of those individuals, they live paycheck to paycheck. And I mean, I think that it's kind of relating to a lot of different types of comments of what people are, you know, talking about when they provide comments and discussions on those types of statistics and what, you know, this would demonstrate about the economy because a lot of people are trying to mention the fact that some people live above their means, which I mean, that's true, you know, like it really depends how much you can make out of a little money or what, however you're going to look to spend your money. I can just speak personally for myself in my case and from the perspective that I haven't had a job pretty much like for two years. So I've really gotten by pretty much with not being able to get anything because if you don't have a job, that's going to completely tarnish or, you know, inhibit anybody act anybody's economic freedom but you know i still do get things you know maybe here and there just more of a few times a year just maybe you know uh you know instead of having more economic freedom in which i could always pay for my own food i could you know maybe uh you know get you know like ice cream every now and then or you know go to the movies and or you know other types of leisure fun activities now i pretty much can't do any of that and you know but i still you know just try to make very good use of my time pretty much with nothing new in my life in the sense that, you know, I don't really have the ability to get anything for myself again. So what I'm doing is that I'm basically like trying to make uh, the most out of whatever funds I had, uh, you know, saved up before I ran out or um, anything that I can just do that, you know, provides maybe some temporary income that can last me, you know, a few weeks or, you know, a short period of time you know, a short period of a month at a time, uh, which would then give me the ability to maybe like, you know, get ice cream or get other little food or, you know, do things like that, you know? So it just goes to show that you can still make it, but the fact that 
it's still so surprising to me how some people who they make like maybe 150 or 200,000 like if I remember the statistic correctly it was saying 52% of them live paycheck to paycheck and it's just kind of mind-boggling to me because I'm able to get by almost on nothing rather than maybe if I was able to you know uh, afford the brunt of more of my living expenses and living costs living costs and being able to afford it being able to afford something at least in the minimum base case scenario which isn't even happening right now but for the sake of conversation if we just say that this is then I think that that would make everybody's sentiment about the economy and the economic reality that we're facing and inflation and you know the Federal Reserve's approach to tackling inflation better because I know that the Federal Reserve they're even concerned about the cooling of the labor sector because even though a lot of <clears throat> even though a lot of news outlets and other uh, you know economic economically oriented uh, you know publications they really talk a lot about the fact that oh you know we have really low unemployment but you know uh, and they say all these types of claims they kind of leave some aspects maybe of the economic data to be uncertain or kind of vague because I mean it's not at all a, a debate or a discussion to for people to realize that when the when the National Bureau of Labor Statistics had to do a downward revision of 819,000 jobs easily going maybe on 900,000 jobs if they were reporting you know data more consistently or trying to you know not have to make such a substantial revision uh, to their labor statistics namely the largest uh, revision since 2008 then I think we could have a lot more confidence in what economic data is being reported to us from the ground so to speak and how that would actually reflect about the job market because so many companies they just post and repost jobs so often um, you know they post very similar types of jobs for months they carry out interviews but their communication is extremely choppy with clients all of these reasons contribute to difficulties that are characterizing the job market and when individuals or people they're trying to cast doubt upon the fact that you know there's any type of negative economic data or downsides to inflation on the economy i really feel like we need to we need to revisit this type of discussion with these people in a few years to see what actually ends up happening and whether there's a discrepancy more on my side or on their side in terms of our the overall perception of the economy